we want to go in and try to look at this area. We're going to put in or propose a design for some new cell towers. What are the costs going to be? Well, we're supposed to be maintaining wilderness throughout the park, so all of this land is actually supposed to be wilderness, or at least most of it. We're trying to manage and maintain visual quality, visual aesthetic quality. So there's a bunch of data that helps us control our analysis and our design. And there's what the public cares about, which is those scenic overlooks, the photo opportunities. So there's a couple of those down near the reservoir. Well, let's go ahead and finish some analysis that I was working on, which was trying to figure out exactly what they would see from those two vantage points. There's a skyline, there's a view shed, a couple tools that are going to do my analysis. And I want to go ahead and run this model. But at the same time I run it, I want to multitask. If you look at the bottom of the screen, there's that blue status bar. That's our geoprocessing model running. But I'm going to go ahead and turn on the imagery at the same time. I'm going to use some new tools for adjusting the display properties of the imagery. And what I'm going to do is adjust the contrast a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and adjust a gamma correction. So I'm just changing some of the display properties, including the transparency. We're doing all of that at the same time that a background geoprocessing task is running. Whenever that task is finished, you'll see the display will be updated, and we've added the new results. So I'm now more efficient because I'm doing two things at once. So let's go ahead and take a look at these results in a little bit more detail. The red areas are showing you all the areas that are visible from those scenic overlooks. The red outline are the skylines, some of the uh, important skylines, the ridge lines that we want to preserve. In basic terms, anything red is not where you're going to put a new cell tower. So we want to go in and sketch in some new locations for the cell towers, especially around Vernon Lake, where we're having all these problems. Now, I say sketch, but in fact, we're just going to use the new editing tools. The new editing tools allow me to create features or do some sketching for this, in this case, the proposed new design. All I need to do on the right side is what I've discovered is click on the feature I want. I want to add a new cell tower. I want to choose the location. And I want to create a road. You just can't put a cell tower out in the middle of nowhere unless you add a road to service it. So I'm going to sketch in a new road that kind of follows the old trail and connects down to the main road by the reservoir. And we'll do this a second time. So let's go add in a second tower southwest of the reservoir, and we need a little road to connect that. Once we've sketched in and created our new design, we need to evaluate the impact. Are we going to get a benefit out of this, and what are the costs? Well, the benefits are going to be, could we have provided good cell phone coverage to these red dots up around the lake if we had had the tower in place? So let's go ahead and run our analysis, try to answer this question. We run the model. It's going to calculate the cell phone coverage, and it's going to intersect it then with our wilderness maps and our aesthetic quality maps to try to calculate not only the dollar cost, but also the intangible costs about how we're going to be changing the landscape. Once that's done, if the dots turn green, that means we've got good cell coverage now in those areas where we have the problems. However, it came at a price. That road is going to have a corridor, a buffer that's now disturbed land, so it's not going to be pristine wilderness anymore. If we want to quantify that, we can bring up the statistical chart. And if you look at this, let's explain the red parts. The first one says that 38% of the visitors do not have cell phone coverage before we put these towers in. And 74% of the search and rescue operations last year didn't have coverage. But if you take into account the new designs that we just proposed, you'll see how those shrink. We're now going to provide better coverage to more people in the park and if you look down below, this is the cost to our visual quality, and the cost to the wilderness means we're going to lose about 1,158 acres from wilderness to non-wilderness. So now you start to understand a lot more of the facts and the challenges in this debate. I can communicate this with the public. We can take the same models and the same tools and put those out in a web application using the server technology. So real dynamic maps that allow you to evaluate as a citizen alternative one and no action and what's going to happen, alternative two, our proposed new plan, as well as the costs that are going to be applied to that. In fact, you could even go in and design your own solution so we could let the public start to explore what would be alternative solutions. So instead of now just having a public debate where 70% of the room said, keep wilderness. Now I think maybe we're a little bit more informed. We use the technology to
to apply some rational thinking to that emotional response of just saying, we need to keep the wilderness. I'm not going to tell you how the story ends. We can talk to the park service or to anybody else to figure out how it really ends. What I wanted you to do, though, is experience some of the new technology. And I hope if I did what I was trying to accomplish, you saw some of those efficiency gains. You saw how I could find data easily, how I could navigate around the system. You'll see a lot more this afternoon. We're going to go through a lot of these concepts in more detail and explain exactly what was doing. This was just a quick glimpse and the overview. Thank you.